Hi, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shavastav. In the series of the programming of the graph, till now we have discussed about how to represent a graph in the memory. Then we have discussed about the BFS and the DFS methods. We then have computed the number of the connected components and number of vertices in each of the connected components using the DFS algorithm. We then have discussed about uh, the single source shortest path and the minimalist spanning tree using the PIMS algorithm. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, the Warshall algorithm. The Warshall algorithm is the all pair shortest uh, path algorithm method. It's based on the dynamic programming method, wherein we uh, make every vertex as a mediator uh, one time and uh, find out if we have any shorter length path than the direct path. So let's look at a scenario and uh, find out how to use the Warshall algorithm to find the shortest path. Suppose we have a graph and the graph looks like this. Vortex number one, vortex number zero, vortex number two and vortex number three. So in this graph, we have assigned the weights to each of the edge of the graph. Let's say the weights of the edges are from zero to one, we have let's say 50. From 1 to 3, let's say we have 20. From 0 to 2, let's say we have 10. And then from 2 to 0, let's say we have 25. From 3 to 2, let's say we have 5 weight. So this is the graph. You can represent this graph by the weight matrix. The weight matrices are similar to that of uh, the adjacency matrix, wherein the connections were represented by one and non-connections were represented by zero. So if I have this graph, then if the vertices are zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, if there is a connection between a pair of the vertex, we will represent that by the weight of that connection. For example, from zero to one, we have an edge and it has a cost 50, but from zero to two, zero to three, and zero to, uh, zero to one, Sorry, 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, we don't have any edge. So I'm writing this once again. So 0 to 0, there is no edge. 0 to 1, there is an edge of cost 50. 0 to 2, there is no edge. And 0 to 3, there is no edge. Similarly, from 1 to 0, there is no edge. From 1 to 1, there is no edge. But from 1 to 2, we have an edge of cost 10. And 1 to 3, we have a cost uh, edge of cost 20. Similarly, from 2 to 0, we have an edge of cost 25, but there is no other edge from 2. Similarly, from 3 to 1, we have uh, 3 to 2, there is an edge of cost 5. And in all of this scenario or all other vertices, there is no edge. So this is the weight matrix of the given graph. And uh, if we have to find out uh, the uh, all pair shortest path, it means we have to find out the shortest path between every pair of the vertex. That is, we have to find out the shortest path between 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3. Then we have to find out the shortest path between 1 to 0, 1 to 2, 1 to 3. And from 2 to 0, 2 to 1, and 2 to 3, and 3 to 0, 3 to 1, and 3 to 2. So these are all possible pairs between which we have to find out the shortest path. For finding out, Warshall has suggested a method that you first prepare the distance matrix and the distance matrix can be provided like this. If I have all the weights positive and there is no negative weight, then I can keep all the diagonal elements as zero, meaning that if I have the vertex from one to one, uh, or we have the entry from one to one in the distance matrix, obviously you can reach from one to one in zero time. So hence we have kept the distance of all the diagonal entries as zero. So diagonal entries will be representing one, one, two, two, three, three, and the first one will be representing the zero, zero. So let's mark the vertex number so that it becomes easier for us to make the entries. And then for all the positive entries are kept as same. For example, we are keeping all the positive entries means greater than zero entries at the place wherever they are. 
and then we are making all other entries in the table as infinite. It means if I have the zero entry in the weight matrix, for the distance matrix, it looks like that we uh, we are not able to reach from uh, the source vertex to the destination vertex. For example, here in this matrix, I can say that I cannot reach from zero to three. I cannot reach from zero to three. Similarly, I cannot reach from one to zero. I cannot reach from two to one and two to three. I cannot reach from three to one, so three to zero and three to one because these entries are infinite. So making the entries infinite initially means that initially these vertices are not approachable. It means the uh, vertices uh, have no connections as of now. But the Warshall has suggested that you should take every vertex once as a mediator and find out if the path exists via that vertex. For example, if I select the vertex number zero as a mediator, then you can see that if I have uh, the vertex zero as a mediator, so two to one entry, which is initially initially infinite. This is you can see that this is infinite. But I, if I take the vertex number zero as a mediator, then I can reach from two to one via zero because there is a path from two to zero and there is a path from zero to one. So two to zero path has a cost twenty five, and zero to one has a cost fifty. Now, if I have uh, uh, if I take another example of uh, this Warshall algorithm. Let's take another vertex as a mediator. Let's say we are taking vertex number one as a mediator. So I cannot uh, uh, reach from zero to two directly, but I have a method of reaching from zero to two via one. So zero to two can be reached via one as you go first from zero to one, which has a cost 50, and then you go from one to two, which has a cost 10. So altogether, you can reach from zero to two in 60 amount of the distance. So you should update your matrix accordingly. So either the path is either the direct path is minimum. So if I have a DIJ entry in the matrix, so either that is minimum, or if I take a vertex k as a mediator, then you go from i to k, and then you go from k to j, and you add the cost of these two, or you add the distance of uh, these two edges, and maybe that this is minimum. So either this will be minimum or this one. If I take a scenario of this one, what we took. The ij was like two zero, and we took uh, uh, two one. So i was two and uh, j was one, and the uh, k was zero. The vertex that has been taken as a mediator is zero. So if I take the zero number vertex as a mediator, so I first go from two to zero, and then I go from zero to one, and then we add up these two costs. So either the distance between two to one, which is infinite in the table or in the matrix, or two to zero has a cost twenty five, and this has a cost fifty. So if I add these two, means twenty five and fifty, it becomes seventy five, which is the smaller one as compared to the infinite. So I will take or I will update the matrix entry as seventy five. So at a time you will take one vertex as a mediator, and you will keep going like that. You have to take every vertex as a mediator. At some point of time. So let's say we have uh, the uh, distance matrix available. We have already formed the distance matrix. Let's say, then we will have to take every vertex as a mediator. So let's write the algorithm. Let's say that we have a k which is a mediator. So for k equals to zero to n minus one two. Let's say n is representing the number of the vertices, and the number of the vertex is ranging from zero to n minus one. So if you take uh, k is zero. You will have to see all the entries of the table. So that's why your nested loop will be working here. So for i equals to zero to n minus one two, and for i for j is equals to zero to n minus one two. So let's say the i is representing the row number and the j is representing the column number. You will apply a formula if uh, you have to see the dij entry. So either the dij is directly minimum or D I K plus D K J entry is minimum. So let me erase this so that we have a sufficient space to write. So either this is minimum or that is minimum. So whichever is whichever of these two is minimum, that will be updated as D I J. The matrix entry from D to I J 
uh, d in uh, d from i to j will be updated with this formula. So this line will be inside the inside the line. So be, please bear with me because uh, I have uh, the the indentation has gone wrong this way. So I hope you must have understood that what we are doing. Let's let me explain it once again. This is representing or this loop is representing that you are taking you are taking every vertex as a digit at one point of time. And then these two loops are representing the matrix entries. So if you have selected k is equals to zero, you will look for all the entries in the table or uh, in, in the matrix. And then you have uh, k equals to one. Then again, now you, you will look at uh, all the entries in the uh, matrix. If you have k equals to two, you will once again see all the matrix entries. And if you have k equals to three, you will see all the matrix entries. So this is one part of the algorithm, but when you will implement this, you will find uh, some of the difficulty. So let me explain those difficulties also a priori before going to code this. So let's say uh, you, you have a weight matrix and you have to convert this weight matrix to the distance matrix. If I take the same example that we took here. Fine, so we have a weight matrix and you have to convert this weight matrix to the distance matrix. So while conversion of the weight matrix to the distance matrix, whenever you are taking the entries in the weight matrix, at the same time, you can set the distance matrix also. Now, uh, you will have to convert some of the entries as infinite. Fine. So I'm just underlining that these are the entries which will be set as infinite in the distance matrix. So how to set the infinite? One of the method is that uh, you select the integer maximum if you are representing the integer maximum as a maximum limit of the integer. So this is one of the way you can set the infinite. But there is a logic of getting this as a failure at some point of time. For example, if you have one of the entries infinite and you are adding another entry as infinite. So these infinite plus infinite, if these are the integer max and integer max, in the implementation, when you add these two values, these will become zero. Because you know that if you cross the limit of the integer, a cyclic process is followed and you go towards the negative side. So if you add the same number of same value again, you will come at the zero in the cycle. So if you add any other value, let's say we are adding 50 to uh, the infinite, then you will land up in the negative value. So neither you require this negative value nor you want this zero to appear. So this will be an error actually, and the computations will find some of the errors uh, in, in the computer. So what should you do that you should take the the uh, infinite as integer max divided by two. Because if you add uh, the integer max divided by two with integer max divided by two, the maximum it, it can go up to integer maximum. And if you add any other value, that will remain in the uh, limit itself of the integer range. So if I have uh, this logic, then we can implement this algorithm very well. So now let's look at the code for this. So here is the code, and uh, in this I have taken the two two matrices, the big size matrix of uh, W and uh, the D. W is representing the weight matrix, and D is representing the distance matrix. Since you require the minimum, so I have just written a small function of the minimum, which has two parameters in it, x and y. If x is less than y, it will return x. Otherwise, it will return y. Now coming to the main where I have where I have taken the input of the number of the vertices by the user in n variable. After this, I am getting an input of the weight matrix. So the weight matrix can be taken as an input with the help of the two uh, two nested loops, i and j nested loop. i is representing the row number and j is representing the column number. The weight matrix has been input in W. Now. If uh, we are converting this weight matrix to the distance matrix at this point of time, only. so if i is not equal to j, it means that it is not a diagonal entry. So, if this is not the diagonal entry, you have to do two, two things. If the weight matrix is representing zero, it means you have to set that value as the infinite. So, integer max divided by two is giving you the infinite. And if it is not zero value then you will keep that value unchanged. So whatever is the value in the wij, the same will be there in the distance matrix as well. 
But if uh, we have the diagonal entry, then that diagonal entry will be set as zero. Or you can say that if, even if you leave it as such, because in the weight matrix also this value will be zero. So you are setting that uh, dij entry has been set as zero for the diagonal entry. So we have uh, formed the distance matrix and then comes the uh, Warshall algorithm, the actual Warshall algorithm, wherein three loops are taken. The outermost loop is telling that uh, we are taking one vertex as a mediator at one point in time. And then this, these two nested loops are uh, saying that we will look for all the entries in the weight uh, in, in the distance matrix for every selected mediator vertex. The formula says that you have either the dij is minimum directly or you go through k and the path for from k, i to k and k to j added together is minimum. So you're finding out the minimum of these two and whatever is the value is set in the d or you have updated the distance matrix through this function. Finally, you will print this uh, matrix, the dij matrix. Let's look at this algorithm. Uh, let's uh, run this algorithm and see if this works correctly. So I'm running this. So it's asking to enter the number of uh, the vertices. Uh, let's go to the whiteboard where we have taken an example. And with the same example, I will take the inputs. So we have a weight matrix for the graph given. We'll input the same weight matrix. So this is the output and this is the graph. So it's asking about the number of the vertices. It is four number of the vertices here. The weight matrix is 0, 15, 0, and 0. Then 0, 0, 10, and 20. 25, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, and 0. So these are the updated entries. You can see that the input matrix is 0, 50, 0, 0. But when you got the output, the first row has two updated values, 60 at uh, 0, 2 position and uh, 70 at 0, 3 position. So let's verify if these entries are correct or not. So the 0, 2 entry is 60. How did we get the 0, 2 entry as 60? You can go from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2. So this has been verified. 0, 2, 3 entry is 70. So let's verify if it is correct. So if you go via 1 to 3, 0 to 1, and then 1 to 3, this is 50 plus 20, 70, this is also got verified. You can take any other random value which has been updated. Let's take this value, 3 to 0. Okay, so 3 to 0 is one of the entry which has been updated. So 3 to 0 can be reached via 2, yes. So if you go from 3 to 2 and then 2 to 0, the entry is 5 plus 25 that is there. So this is also got verified. Let's take one final value which needs to be verified. Uh, this is 3 to 1 entry. So 3 to 1 entry, you can reach from 3 to 1 uh, by following a very long path. 3 to 2, then 2 to 0, and then 0 to 1. So how much uh, cost will be involved here? 5 plus 25, 30 plus 50, that is 80. So in 80 cost, you can reach from 3 to 1. So I think uh, all the entries can be verified likewise. And we are done with the Wash algorithm. So the Wash algorithm was a dynamic programming algorithm, as I said in the beginning itself. It is uh, up, uh, making the mediator matrices just to reach uh, to the final matrix. And uh, we are uh, making the concept of the minimization uh, whenever we are updating the distances. So it means that uh, it's using the concept of the minimization. It is using the concept of uh, the uh, mediator uh, results that are helpful for us to generate the final result. So hence, this is the dynamic programming method. 
in the next lecture we will discuss about another algorithm for the floyd washer which is used for finding out the transitive closure of the matrix so please watch that video as well thank you for watching this video please like and share this video